Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Not exactly. You dress like a preacher. If you'll excuse me. Back up, fancy pants. You ain't no preacher. I figure I'm making you dance some for the folks. You think you can hoorah me? Dude, I said dance. Dance or the next shot will take off one of your toes. I don't think I'd like that. Doc, no. All right, so and put up the gun. Marshal, you got a wild and woolly town here. Marshal, you move aside. I'm going to make this grinning dude kick up his heels for us. I'd say that might be quite a trick, Thorne. Unless he's changed a lot since I last met him. Have you, Doc? Not for the good, Matt. <laughs> I was afraid. Oh, you pacey face tenderfoot. I said for Shut you... Shut up, Thorne. He's drunk, Doc. He's dead. You just don't know it yet. I'll take it good if you'd meet me later at my office. All right, Matt. To you. Well, that's sure a lot of talk. Now I'm going to shoot that dude's boot heels. Fire one shot and I'll pistol with you, Thorne. What's that? You're kind of forgetting who's holding a gun, ain't you? Oh! I wasn't forgetting. Oh, my wrist. You broke my wrist. I doubt it. Now let's go to jail. Oh, you can't put me in jail. I'm Thorne Finley. Move. Oh, you wait till I tell Big Jack about this. And I will, too. Do that. He might be grateful to me for saving your neck. You pulled some fool stunts, Thorn, but you've never been closer to dying than just a minute ago. Do you mean from that fancy pants? Oh, I could handle six like him. That makes you a lot of men. I can name a dozen pretty good gun hands who can't handle one of it. What? That's Doc Holliday. <laughs> Salute, Matt. Salute, Doc. <coughs> that sounds worse, Doc. Yeah, I got orders to go to Arizona. <coughs> Air's dry there, better for my lungs. Going? Thought I might. Wyatt invited me to visit him. He and Virgil and Morgan of the law down there. Some little mining town called Tombstone. <laughs> well, it sounds peaceful anyway. If it isn't, it will be by the time White Herb gets through. He is the peacemakingest man I ever met outside of you. <laughs> Matt, who was the teller head down at the depot, anyway? Oh, Thorne? He's just a spoiled kid. Kid? Couldn't be much younger than you. Sure, but Thorne never grew up. His father has coddled him and protected him and gotten him out of scrapes ever since he was a pup. He's never had to be a man. Not with Big Jack wet nursing him. Big Jack... Big Jack Finley. Oh, you know him? I've heard of him. Well, that figures he owns about half of Kansas. Star in a box runs more cows than he can count. Swings a lot of weight and dodge. Yeah, too much. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, somebody said that Doc Holliday had come into town today and he... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's all right, Chester. Why don't you shake hands with him? Don't mind if I shake with my left hand. It's kind of habit. Yeah, I know. Mr. Dillon has the same habit. He would. How about dinner tonight, Matt? Sure, sure. <coughs> How long will you be in Dodge? Not long. 
Just till I finish a chore. Oh? Uh-huh. That, uh, chore have anything to do with Big Jack Finley? Might say so. It's gonna kill him. Turn him loose. You, uh, forgot to close the door, Mr. Finley. You're going to turn my boy loose? Or I'm going to have to do it for you. You got a writ of habeas corpus? Writ? Thorne didn't commit no crime. The charges are drunk and disorderly, disturbing the peace, and attempted assault with a deadly weapon. I was. You still need a writ. But man, Judd and Nathan does what I say, and you know it. But you think I can get a writ? I'm sure you can and will. You always do. Then what's the point, Dylan? It's just a lot of useless red tape. It's the law. Hmm. Close the door on the way out. All right, Thorne. Didn't I tell you Big Jack would get me out? When are you going to learn you can't play? save the speech? The law can't touch a Finley. You ought to get smart, Marshal. Like you? Sure, like me. Hi, Big Jack. You okay, son? Fine. Anything else, Mr. Finley? Why, yes. Uh, uh, my boy here is a little boisterous sometimes. I know. High-spirited, you understand? Uh-huh. So? So, I want to put a stop to all this nonsense of yours, arresting him every time he kicks up his heels a bit. Now, go on. Well, I'm offering you a job. Let's say, protecting my interests. Two hundred a month. And no work, naturally. <laughs> I see we understand each other perfectly. No work, of course. All I have to do is just shut my eyes whenever Junior here breaks the law, huh? I said we understand each other. There's no need to elaborate on it, Dylan. There's a big need. Only how do I explain to a person like you that some men don't wear a price tag? Huh? How do I explain how I feel about a so-called respectable citizen making the law his private doormat? Hey, you're nothing but the stupid gunman I've always thought you were. I understand you took the part of Doc Holliday against my son. I kept Thorne from committing suicide, yeah. And you sided with a notorious killer against an important citizen of this community. Now I'm telling you, Dylan. Holiday. I don't want him in Dodge tomorrow. Doc may be a gunfighter, but he's clear with the law, Finley, and a better man than your son will ever be. What? Why, I... That hurts, doesn't it? You... I'm serving notice, Marshal. You run that killer out of Dodge City... Or I'll do it myself. Big Jack Finley. Cattleman and self-made king of southern Kansas. No better or worse than most of the men carving empires out of the west. Until love for his son blinded him to the fact that Thorn Finley had gone bad. And from here on I knew the war was on between Big Jack and me. So Big Jack Finley's going to run me out of town, huh? No. Yeah. Unless I do it first. Oh? I do something naughty, Matt? Well, you threaten a man's life. Oh, <laughs> that. <laughs> and just between friends, Matt. Anything else, Doc? Not murder. Murder? I can give him an even break. Uh, with you, that's still murder. Uh, don't you think you better tell me about it? Mm-hmm. What if I don't tell you? Now, yeah, then my job's to warn Finley and try to protect him. You're a tough man to be friends with, Matt. That applies to you, too, doesn't it? Guess maybe it does at that. Didn't realize how I put you on the spot by spouting off my good intentions. Sorry. Ah, oh, forget it, forget it. <coughs> you want to talk to me? <coughs> All right. Remember a girl named Ruth Davis? Mm Mm-hmm. Died in a riding accident a few months ago. Always wondered if that wasn't suicide. She lost her brother two weeks before that. No accident. No suicide. You sure? Sure. You know, Ruth and her brother ran their ranch alone. Mm Mm-hmm. A man started pestering Ruth, and she hated him. 
Her brother kicked the man off the ranch. This fellow dragged Gulf's Ruth's brother, made it look like a robbery. You have any proof of this? Yeah. Ruth was afraid to go to the law, so she sent a letter to me. Here, read it yourself. She says the man was Finley and says she expects him to try and shut her up for good. Well, that doesn't mean it's Big Jack. I went to see Ruth's folks. They had her belongings. Among them, I found this. Hmm. Watch chain. Engraved J.F. on the clasp. Jack Finley. You see why I've got to kill him, Matt? He forced Ruth's horse over that cliff, sure. But do you still think she died accidental? No. But who's responsible is something for a court to decide. Court? With Finley's money and influence, he wouldn't spend five days in jail even if he was convicted, which he wouldn't be. He doesn't own the court. Maybe not, but it's still the most powerful man in the state against a dead girl whose only friend is Doc Holliday. How do you think a judge will decide? Doc, I'm going to ask you a favor. Make it one I can give. I got an idea, but uh, you must let me handle it my way. Give the law a chance. All right, Matt, I can wait. Thank you. I'll keep this letter in chain for a while. All right, but if the law fails, I'll brace Big Jack Finley when he walks out of the courthouse. And you'll be bracing two men, Doc. Finley and me. Fine day. Well, you're up kind of early just to bring me a weather report, aren't you, Judge Nathan? Huh? Oh, well, I I want to see you. Now go right ahead. You mind if I finish shaving? No, no, please do. Uh, just thought I'd chat with you about the Barker uh, Fenway. Uh, 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 yes. It seems that Big Jack's very upset by your attitude. I'm not surprised. Feels you're a little rough on his boy. I am. Then his boy's a little rough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, perhaps Thorn is high-spirited, like uh, yesterday. Yesterday he was just plain high. Tell me, Judge Nathan, how do you like being on Fenley's payroll? Uh, what? You know, you used to be a pretty decent person. Oh, uh, you can't talk to me like Yes, that. I can. I'm sending a copy of Thorne's record to the governor. Governor. And with it, I'm sending a list of the rich you've issued to get him out of jail and a copy of the court records. I've only tempered my justice with mercy, that's all. Thorne's been arrested for 18 offenses, convicted of 10, spent no time in jail, and paid a total of $15 in fines. I'd say you've been very merciful. Um, you said you were sending this to the governor. You haven't actually mailed it yet? No. You got an op. Not that I don't feel justified in any decisions I've made, but uh, such a report might cause undue talk at the Capitol. And ruin your political hopes. Well, my conditions are simple. Get off Finley's payroll now. Very well. And give me cooperation from here on, no matter who's involved. Do that and I shelve the report. I'll do it. Mr. Dillon, trouble's a making. What kind of trouble, Chester? It's Big Jack Finley, Mr. Dillon. He's rounding up his crew at the Alfraganza. They're going to ride Doc Holliday out of town on a rail. Did you cut yourself shaving? for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, don't forget, starting Monday, CBS Radio's tremendous news staff will start bringing you the complete coverage of the Democratic Convention in Chicago. As you found during the Republican Convention, CBS Radio never misses. So, starting Monday, stay with CBS Radio all day and evening for the Democratic Convention. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Wake up, Doc. It's Matt. Oh. Uh, 
What's up? Trouble. Lots of trouble. Big Jack Finley's organizing a little citizens committee of his own hand-picked men coming to escort you out of town. On a rail? Yeah, that's the general idea. Here, take a shotgun. Yeah, I'll hide it under the covers, modest-like. Yeah. I'll wait against the wall here. Good. That'll put him in a crossfire. If it comes to that. There's enough of them. We're in a spot. Yeah, likely we are. You're risking your neck to save me some bruises. One I owe you, friend, Matt. It's my job. Still one I owe you. There he is. Wrap him up. All right, stop right there. I'll shoot the man who takes another step. You think you're going to stop us, Dylan? I think so. Me and Doc. Doc. Show him, Doc. Sure thing, Marshal. Look, boys, surprise. I sure do love surprises. Dylan, I've got a dozen men with me. Well, sure, about six of them will die, Finley, if you don't crawl out of here fast. And guess who'll die first, Big Jack? You there, Moncrief. I always figured you for some brains. Get your boss out of here, quick. He's sure talking sense, Big Jack. Shut up, Moncrief. You showing yellow. Oh, but man, there's nothing here for us to die over. Listen to him, Finley. That greener Doc is holding has 18 buckshot in each barrel. He'll get slaughtered if he triggers that thing. And I'm getting edgy, Finley. And me, if I get a coughing spell, I'm liable to shoot without meaning to. All right, all right. <laughs> this is twice you have made a Finley back down. You'll never get a third chance. Let's get out of here. Oh, Matt, when are you going to arrest him? When I'm ready. Not long. I hope not. Getting impatient to see that man dead. I, uh, got your message, Marshal. I hope it's important. It is, Moncrief. How long have you been foreman for Big Jack? Fifteen, sixteen years. You know him pretty well. Would he be the kind to kill a girl? No, of course not. Because he'd kill a man if he got mad enough, but he wouldn't kill no girl, Marshal. Well, I have proof that he did. A girl and her brother. But it doesn't set right. I'm hoping you can help. What's your proof, Marshal? A letter that names Finley as the man. Ruth Davis wrote it before she died. Ruth Davis. And this watch chain was found with her belongings. It's engraved on the back. I know. I uh, was with Big Jack when he bought this chain in Chicago. It was right after his wife died. Big Jack wear it all the time? Mm. You uh, rode the right hunch, Marshal. What? Thorne is your man, just like you figure. He had a yen for the Davis girl, but he kept it quiet. Because he didn't want it known, she threw him over. But the watch chain... Big Jack gave that to Thorne on his 25th birthday. Whole ranch can testify to that. Mm. Good. All right, thank you, Moncrief. You, uh, gonna try and arrest Thorne? Why? If Big Jack believes Thorne killed that girl, it'll break his heart. Broke her neck. If he don't believe it... Then? He'll protect Thorne. And, Marshal, there's not enough lawmen in the state of Kansas to make Big Jack give up his son. Judge Nathan. Uh, ho holiday. Oh, yes, I've heard of you. I've heard of you too, Judge. Wonder which has heard the worst. Uh -uh. What's that? Uh, why, I, uh... Judge, I'm here on business. Oh, of course. Uh, come in, won't you? In my study here, so we won't be disturbed. What is it, Marshal? I want you to swear out a warrant for Thorn Finley's arrest. Charge murder. You sure 
sure you want to go with me, Doc? I'm sure. <coughs> All right, hold up your right hand. Oh, no, Matt, you wouldn't make me a llama. If you go, you go as my deputy. I'm not letting you make this a private fight. And with my friends, if they hear I wore a star... All right, Matt, it's your show. You swear to uphold and enforce the laws of this community, the state of Kansas, and the United States to the best of your ability as deputy marshal, so help you God. All of that? All of that. I swear. Here, pin on this badge. All right, man. You know, I'm feeling this badge is going to cramp my style something terrible. Horses going up through this pass. We still got a good ride ahead. How far? Oh, about ten miles. Hmm. What do you think, Matt? Will they fight? Well. Being smart, Dylan. Queen will drop you if you touch her gun butt. You're handy at this bushwhacking, aren't you, Thorn? If Doc He's is... all right. My slug seems to have bounced off his thick skull. Good. Yeah, let's pull your teeth. Yeah, better you do it. With your left hand, reach down and across slow. Pull your gun out with your fingertips and toss it away. Nervous? Just cautious. Or maybe this queen doesn't exist, huh, Thorn? Queen! Queen's one of Dad's men, but uh, I pay him extra to work for me. Any more questions? I guess not. There's my gun. The rifle next. I, uh... I got a penknife in my pants pocket. You know why Holiday came to Dodge? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you do. You wouldn't be riding with him. Well, he's not going to tell any stories to my dad or anyone else. Uh, you can't kill us, you stupid... Not planning on killing you. And what have you got planned? A queen's kind of a magician. He's going to make Holiday just disappear. Folks won't care much about one of his kind. I would. I'd care so much I'd hang you for it. No. No, with Holiday gone, it's your word against mine. And you won't be able to approve a thing, Dylan. You sure of that? I'm sure. Otherwise, I take care of you along with Holiday. Now get out and start walking back to town. It's like I told you. Law can't touch a Finley. <laughs> no time for heroic, so I walked. When I reached a turn, I cut back through the rocks, but it was too late. They were gone. And with them, the horses, guns, and Doc Holliday. Two miles up the road, I found my horse turned loose. And with a mind full of cold hate, I raced onto the star in a box. On the front porch of the ranch house was one of Big Jack's men. Hold it right there. Out of my way, mister. I'm in no mood to shake hands. Where are you heading, lawman? You don't hear well. <laughs> Dylan! Where's Holiday? How me? should I know? Get off my ranch. And where's that prize son of yours? What? Trot him out. I want him. Do you now? What on earth for? Thorn, put that gun away. Oh, no. This is just in case the marshal loses his temper. I've lost it, Junior. Sure. Dylan, I've had all I'm going to stand from you. You just think you have. Where's Holiday, Thorn? Where'd Queen take him? Holiday? Why, I haven't the faintest idea. Where is Queen, Dad? The righty fence line, but... See, Marshal, we don't know where your friend is. You're under arrest, Thorn. What's that? Ask him to show the warrant. Here. Read it, Finley. What? Oh, no. No, th th that's not possible. The judge wouldn't issue a warrant without proof. He has proof, Thorne. This is a lie. Thorne couldn't be guilty of murder. No. Take a look at his face. Son. Daddy's trying to frame me. 
Don't let him get away with this. No, I won't. I won't. Get out, Dylan. Man, open your eyes. This is not going to help you. You heard me. I don't believe you, your warrant, or your proof. I believe my son. So get off this ranch. Get out of the state. You let me see you again, so help me, I'll kill you myself. Forget me, you're back in the law, you can't. I'm in do my own law. You so do I. Doc Holliday. But you're, you're supposed to be dead. Queen was supposed Queen's to be... the one who's dead. I carry a knife in my boot just for men like him. Bowen, God help me. You are guilty. He sure is. And if he knows any prayers, he'd better get them over with. No, Doc. He goes back with us as our prisoner. You're wrong, Marshal. I'll take care of my son. Dad. Dad, no. You rotten, lying, murderous. Please, pup. please don't. I Dad. should have strangled Stand you in the me. cradle when you were. Stand away, shoot, don't shoot you all. Manley, look out. I threw myself at Fenway and Buck, but hit the floor, rolling away from Thorn as he raised his gun to fire. Then in the doorway, the blood stained, terrible figure of Doc Holliday went into action. His pale hands blurred over his holster. Ah! The Ruth Thorn! Uh, Ruth? Thanks, Chester. You sure you won't stay around a while, Doc? Yeah, we're good friends, Matt, but you're a peace officer. I guess I'm not a very peaceful man. <laughs> you could be, Doc. <laughs> no, I'm not going to change, and you shouldn't. Law needs men like you. No, if I stayed there, there's too good a chance I might cross you. Yeah. Then I'd have to meet you over gun barrels, and it's one thing I'm afraid of. So long, Matt. Good luck, Doc. My. I never would have thought Doc Holliday was scared of meeting anyone in a gunfight. Hmm. You don't understand, Chester. Doc's afraid because he might beat me. Smoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Herb Purdom, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Harry Bartell as Doc Holliday, with Lee Millar, Nestor Piva, Ralph Moody, and Tom Tully. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week. As Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Sunday evenings, we invite you to join lovely Doris Day, Spring Byington playing a December Bride, and Audrey Totter as Millie. They're here on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.